Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3 from the edXL International A Level. We're on Chapter 2, and we've reached 2.3, Composite Functions. If two or more functions are combined together, they create what is called a composite function. So if you have a function f of x and another function g of x, it's possible to combine the two functions together to get f of g of x, which you would read as f of g of x. Now, the order of the functions does matter. You calculate g of x first, and then you would calculate f of that. In other words, f of g of x really means f and then you could put the g of x in brackets if you wanted to, just to make it absolutely clear. You have to do the g of x first and then f. Having said that, no one ever does put the g of x into brackets like that. g of f of x the other way around obviously means the opposite thing. You do f of x first and then do g of that. Okay, a set of three examples. I'll let you have a go first. That first example means you've got to put one into g and then the answer you'd put into F. But pause the video, have a go yourself, and come back when you're done. Okay, we'll go through these together. So the first question, F of G of one. As I said, you begin by putting one into the function G. Now, if you put one into there, you'll get three take away one, which is two. And then you put that answer into F. So we need to find F of two. Putting f into 2, uh, putting 2 into f rather, you get 2 squared plus 2, which is 4 plus 2, which is 6. And that's the answer. Question 2, other way around, g of f of 2. You find f of 2 first of all, which means you put 2 into here and get 2 squared plus 2, which is 4 plus 2, which is 6. And then you would put that answer into g. So to find g of 6, you do three times by six and then take away one. 18 take away one gives you 17. And the last one, f of f of three, sometimes that's written as f squared of three, nothing to do with squared. It just means you do f of three and then you do f of the answer. So first of all, putting three into f, you get three squared plus two, which is nine plus two, which is 11. And then the answer you put back into f again, and you get 11 squared plus 2, which is 121 plus 2, which is 123. Okay, slightly more confusing than that. Functions, functions can also be combined into a composite function algebraically, giving a new single function, which is the composite of the two original functions. For example, Given that you had the function f of x is x squared plus 2 and g of x equals 3x minus 1, rather than saying find f of g of a number, you could say find f of g of x, and then you will get one composite function. Now, g of x, g of x is 3x minus 1. So if I'm going to find f of g of x, I need to find f of 3x minus 1. You'll notice gx here has changed to 3x minus 1. That's because that's what g of x equals. g of x equals 3x minus 1. 3x minus 1, we then need to put into the function f. Now, slight overuse of the letter x here, but wherever it says x in f, we're going to replace that with 3x minus 1. So f of x is x squared plus 2. Instead of writing x, we write 3x minus 1. That gives us 3x minus 1 squared plus 2. A little bit confusing. Hope you followed that. Then multiplying out the brackets, you get 9x squared. You get minus 3x twice, plus 1, plus 2. Tidying that up will give you 9x squared minus 6x plus 3. Now, just going back to the first example we did, we had these functions originally. And one of the questions was to find f of g of 1. Um, g of 1 was 2, so then we then had to put 2 into f, and when we did that, we got 6 for the answer. It's now possible to do that using the composite function, using the combined function. So f of g of x, we just said, is equal to 9x squared minus 6x plus 3. 
If I put 1 into there, then I'll get 9 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 3. That gives me 9 minus 6 plus 3, and that gives me 6 as before. So two ways of finding f of g of 1. We could put 1 into g and then put the answer into f, or you can do what we've done here, create a composite function, and then once you've done that, just put 1 into the composite function, and you do get the same answer out. Okay, examples two. Have a go at these. Um, no, I think I'll just let you try them yourself, and then once you've had a go at them, come back. So pause the video. Okay, I'll talk through these carefully. Some people do get a little bit confused on these, understandably. So the first question was asking us to find f of g of x. Well, g of x, we already know. g of x is 4x plus 1. So instead of writing g of x, I can write 4x plus 1. And that means I've got to find f of 4x plus 1. Now I need to put 4x plus 1 into the function f. Well, that's the function f. And what it says is, whatever's in the brackets, you're going to have to square it and take away 1. Well, this is in the brackets, 4x plus 1. So I'm going to have to square 4x plus 1 and then take away 1. Multiplying out the brackets, I get that. Tidying up the terms, I get that. I could factorize that. Doesn't particularly matter unless you're asked to in the question. Now, the second question asks you to find f of g of 2 using the composite function. That just means using the answer that we just got. So we just worked out that f of g of x as a composite function is equal to x 8x into 2x plus 1. Now, using that, we've just got to substitute 2 into there for x. So f of g of 2 will equal 8 times 2 outside the brackets, and then you've got 2 times 2 plus 1 inside the brackets. That gives us 16 times 5, and that gives us 80. Third question, g of f of x. I'm going to do f of x first of all. Well, f of x is x squared minus 1. So instead of writing down f of x, I write down x squared minus 1. And that gives me g of x squared minus 1. Now, the function g says you've got to do 4 times whatever's in the brackets, and then add 1. In this instance, I've got x squared minus 1 in the brackets, so I'm going to have to do 4 times by that, and then add 1. That gives me 4 into x squared minus 1 plus 1. Multiply out the brackets, gives me that. And I don't think there is um, very much I can do to tidy that up. 4x squared minus 3 is as far as it goes. Fourth question asks us to find f of f of x. Well, f of x is x squared minus 1. So f of f of x is f of x squared minus 1. Instead of writing f of x, I've just written x squared minus 1. And again, as before, what that means is we've got to put x squared minus 1, substituting it in for x here. Or the other way of thinking about it, whatever's in the brackets, I've got to have to square that and then take away 1. This is what's in the brackets, so I'm going to have to square this and take away 1. I'm really just substituting this value in for x. That gives me x squared minus 1 all squared, then take away 1. That gives me that. Tidying that up gives me that. Again, I could factorize that, but on this instance, it looks like I haven't chosen to. And the fifth question says, find x if f of g of x is 168. Well, f of g of x, I've just found. f of g of x is equal to 16x squared plus 8x. This is saying that that has to equal 168. You just form the equation in a normal way. These two things must be the same as each other. So 168 must equal 16x squared plus 8x. I solve that in the normal way. Uh, I can divide by 8. Everything there is a multiple of 8. So that gives me 21 equals 2x squared plus x. Moving things around, I get that. It's a quadratic. It does factorize. Factorizes into 2x plus 7 times by x minus 3 equals 0. And that'll give me two solutions. So the first solution is x equals 3, coming from that bracket. And the second solution is x equals minus 7 over 2, coming from that bracket. One more example. 
Now, this time things do get a bit more confusing. You have a modulus for a function. Modulus functions are always more confusing. And the question is, given that f of x is the modulus of 2x minus 8, and g of x is equal to x plus 1 over 2, first of all, find f of g of 3. That'll be fairly straightforward. But then the second question is the tricky one. It asks us to solve f of g of x is equal to x. I'll let you have a go at both of these first, and then I'll go through them with you. Pause the video. OK, we'll have a look at these. So the first question, f of g of 3, no surprises or catches here. First of all, we find g of 3, which means we put 3 into this function. That gives us 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Then we need to put that answer into f. So f of g of 3, putting that answer into f gives us the modulus of 2 times 2, take away 8 which is 4 take away 8, which is minus 4. We need to find the modulus of minus 4. That swaps the sign from minus to plus. So f of g of 3 will equal plus 4. Now, the last question. Solve f of g of x equals x. How do we do this? Well, the first thing we need to do is find f of g of x. F of g of x, well, g of x we know. G of x is x plus 1 over 2, so that's the first thing we do. We say g of x is x plus 1 over 2. And then we need to substitute this into f. So instead of writing x, I'm going to write that. Or whatever is in the brackets, I'm going to have to do the modulus of 2 times that, take away 8. However you think about it, that is what you need to get. F of g of x is the modulus of 2 times by x plus 1 over 2, take away 8. These twos cancel, which just gives me x plus 1 minus 8, and that gives me f of g of x is equal to the modulus of x minus 7. That's the composite function. Now we need to go back to the question. The question has asked us to solve f of g of x is equal to x. So when is this equal to x? The modulus of x minus 7 equals x. I think we dealt with this earlier on in the chapter. There are a couple of ways we could do it. We could sketch a graph um, just to help us see where the solutions are, or if we did it accurately, we could use the graph and work out the solution from it. Um, or we could just use algebra, considering the two possibilities. And in this instance, I'm just going to do it using algebra. Now, the two possibilities. It really depends on what's in the modulus. The first possibility is what we've got in the modulus is positive. So x minus 7 is greater than 0. It's a positive number. Now, if that's the case, the modulus doesn't do anything to it because it doesn't do anything to a positive number. So if x minus 7 is greater than 0, you can just get rid of the modulus signs and say x minus 7 must equal x. When you solve that, immediately things go strange. You get minus 7 equals 0. Well, minus 7 does not equal 0. What that means is that there is no solution if x minus 7 is a positive number, if x minus 7 is greater than 0. There is only one other possibility. The second possibility is that x minus 7 is a negative number, that it is less than 0. So we need to consider that possibility. Now, if it's negative, we can get rid of the modulus signs. But when we do so, we need to remember that we need to multiply by minus 1. So if x minus 7 is negative, the modulus swaps the sign. And the way that happens is you multiply by minus 1. So we get minus into x minus 7 equals x. That gives us minus x plus 7 is x. That gives us 7 is equal to 2x. And that gives us x equals 3.5, which is the only solution to this equation x minus 7 equals x, where that is in a modulus. OK, that gets us to the end of the lesson. If you have the textbook, then turn to page 22 and have a go at exercise 2C. Thank you very much for listening and cheerio.